आई एम योर होस्ट सलीम बिन मोहम्मद रफ़ी एंड हेयर इज़ माय यूट्यूब चैनल जमीर यूनिवर्सल फॉर ए प्राइम मिनिस्टर और फॉर सम प्राइम मिनिस्टर इलेक्टेड थर्ड और फोर्थ टाइम इन इसराइल and no matter what his background is no matter what the history will uh, write about his cruelty and about the genocide he has committed and the war crimes he has committed nobody wishes that he commits suicide or or he dies in the international court of justice arrested humiliated in front of his wife and children and nation and you can see how depressed he is you see his pale face and from that you can see that he is a man who the who has lost in the field but he is trying to keep a straight face at home you can see people attacking his uh, both the cancer also going right into his residency to trying to harm him who harm his security minister going after his car is calling police and there now the another miss see one by one from the security chief the chief of army staff they resigning and quitting see that youngsters they are how many who have deserted they don't want to be amputees and they don't want to join the list of cruelty and be charged as the one who committed war crimes all those who were involved in the war crimes of bosnia herzegovina and they regret and history will always remember that what happened in 90s in europe and this in 2024 23 24 the history is never going to forget and now the people who call themselves chosen are now you can see from the social media they are calling themselves and it is not somebody else calling calling themselves they are now the most undesirable and most hated person with the global boycott and nobody wants to have anything to do with them so who is the gainer what did they gain by flattening and now it will take 14 years if you remove that debris and you require 92 billion dollars to clean it and 20% of the all those bombs and ammunition which are not you know they 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 did not explode and they are there so the constant threat they pose to human life whoever uh, the bulldozers or anybody who tries to clean and uh, take up this very very difficult job and then reconstruct is you know the city or a habitat for 2.5 million you know gazans is not going to be an easy task why do it and why can't this man now when the whole nation and especially i pity the presidents of the united states and i'm not just limiting myself to joe biden the sleepy joe but it goes way back obama did the same thing trump did worst and if even you go further than that uh, except eisenhower who, who just told them to shut up and gave him a shut up call and uh, had that camp david accord otherwise there would have been never any peace in that region even with egypt now rafa 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 what will you do for god's sake in rafa you cannot kill an ideology you 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 kill one uh, hamas and there are 10 born who you if anybody you kill father and mother and children and wife what do you expect they will fight you back uh, he is when i think the progeny the children and grandchildren and grand grand grandchildren will fight you back so ultimately one has to sit on the table and resolve same thing happened in first world war second world war in any conflict so why not do it now and uh, avoid the these international warrants and give up and start respecting the international institutions have an immediate ceasefire an unconditional ceasefire show that magnanimity and with that goodwill you would see the tide can turn in your favor and the, i think you owe this to all the jewish people who you gather from all around the world we know that typically there is a failure rate of at least 10% of land service ammunition ammunition that is being fired and fails to function what we know do know is that we estimate 30 37 million tons of of debris which is approximately 300 kilos of debris per square meter um 
65% of the buildings that have been destroyed are residential buildings. But an estimation has been done based on the current number of, of tons of, of debris in, in Gaza. And with 100 trucks, we're talking about 14 years of work with 100 trucks. So that's based on that figure, 14 years to remove uh, with approximately 750,000 work days, uh, person work days to remove the debris. No, Mr. Netanyahu, it is not anti-Semitic or pro-Hamas to point out that in a little over six months, your extremist government has killed 34,000 Palestinians and wounded more than 78,000, 70% of whom are women and children. It is not anti-Semitic to point out that your bombing has completely destroyed more than 221,000 housing units in Gaza, leaving more than a million people homeless, almost half the population. It is not anti-Semitic to note that your government has obliterated Gaza's civilian infrastructure, electricity, water, and sewage. It is not anti-Semitic to realize that your government has annihilated Gaza's healthcare system, knocking 26 hospitals out of service and killing more than 400 healthcare workers. It is not anti-Semitic to condemn your government's destruction of all of Gaza's 12 universities and 56 of its schools, with hundreds more damage, leaving 625,000 students with no educational opportunities. It is not anti-Semitic to agree with virtually every humanitarian organization in saying that your government, in violation of American law, has unreasonably blocked humanitarian aid coming into Gaza, creating the conditions in which so many thousands of children face malnutrition and famine. Mr. Netanyahu, anti-Semitism is a vile and disgusting form of bigotry that has done unspeakable harm to many millions of people. But please, do not insult the intelligence of the American people by attempting to distract us from the immoral and illegal war policies of your extremist and racist government. Do not use anti-Semitism to deflect attention from the criminal indictment you are facing in the Israeli courts. It is not anti-Semitic to hold you accountable for your actions. This week, I got a rare inside look at APAC, the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee. It's one of the most powerful lobbying groups in the U.S. and one that impacts our elected officials' decisions on foreign policy in the Middle East and even where our tax dollars go. I attended their annual conference, which drew 18,000 supporters and every major presidential candidate except for Bernie Sanders. I got to hear pro-Israel messaging that was so strong, facts didn't even seem to matter. What do we say about that? We don't consider it occupation. The glimpse I got of the APAC machine in action was as fascinating as it was frightening. Here's why. First, the pandering of our presidential candidates was so intense, you'd think they were running for office in Israel. America can't ever be neutral when it comes to Israel's security or survival. America will stand unapologetically with the nation of Israel. I'm a newcomer to politics, but not to backing the Jewish state. Even though he previously said he would be neutral on the question of Israel and Palestine, Trump totally flipped the script at AIPAC and basically regurgitated their talking points. And he even prepared a speech for once. When I become president, the days of treating Israel like a second-class citizen will end on day one. Nothing quite got standing ovations at AIPAC like slamming the Iran deal. This is a deal that AIPAC lobbied hard against and spent millions trying to defeat, yet failed. When questioned outside the conference, AIPAC supporters said things like this. At the end of the day, the deal did pass. But inside, it was a different story. On the first day in office, I will rip this catastrophic Iranian nuclear deal to shreds. Another popular way to rally the crowd was by dehumanizing Palestinians and blaming them for the absence of peace. 
Palestinian children are raised in a culture that glorifies martyrdom and the willingness to die in the pursuit of killing or maiming Israelis. What I didn't hear was basic context, like the fact that Israel has kept more than 4 million Palestinians under a military occupation for decades, or that Israel continues expanding settlements on Palestinian land in violation of international law and long-standing U.S. policy. Those realities weren't criticized as major impediments to peace at all. Attendees kept saying they supported peace between Israelis and Palestinians, but strangely weren't really ready to talk about Israel's actions in the region. Lastly, APAC's three-day conference ended with a massive lobbying effort. Literally hundreds of Americans were bused to Capitol Hill to urge their elected officials to keep supporting Israel. Our purpose is to talk about Israel. Nothing specific to your communities there. Nothing specific to our communities. Even high schoolers were assigned APAC talking points. APAC had like its three goals. So personally, I'm talking on the first topic, which is about um, a, like Iranian, Iranian, Iranian um, aggressions. APAC's message to U.S. politicians is simple. Support Israel and we'll support you. And like other strong lobbies, they're effective. The U.S. gives Israel more than $3 billion of military aid each year, which Israel uses to advance its interests, even when they contradict our own. But seeing the lobby in action firsthand left me asking, is this how American democracy should work? खुद ही हमास को जंगबंदी की ऑफर भिजवा दी है और अगर यह ऑफर हमास कबूल कर लेती है तो यहां पर जंगबंदी भी हो सकती है एक तरफ रफा ऑपरेशन की तैयारी एक तरफ लेबनान के साथ जंग तेज हो चुकी है और एक तरफ ग्रेटर इसराइल बनाने के दावे हैं लेकिन तमाम फ्रंट्स पर हारने के बाद इसराइल जो है वो मुकम्मल बंद गली में जा चुका है और पूरी तरह से हमास के सामने सरेंडर करने पर मजबूर हुआ है और अगर ये डील नाजिन बढ़ती है आगे कामयाब हो जाती है तो फिर अरब फौजें जो हैं वो गजा में फलस्तीन में उतर सकती हैं और आज़ादी फलस्तीन का बाकायदा प्रोसेस शुरू हो सकता है और इसी डील के दरमियान ये खबरें आ रही हैं कि यूरोप से बहुत ज़्यादा ममालिक फलस्तीन को आज़ादाना तौर पर रिकगनाइज करने जा रहे हैं और नाजिन सऊदी अरब में इस जंग के हवाले से यानी सीज फायर क्या तो ये आपके सामने रखना जरूरी है अच्छा विड्रॉल ऑफ द आईडीएफ फ्रॉम द कॉरिडोर दैट क्रॉस द स्ट्रिप ये आखिरी उनकी ब्रिगेड थी तो मुकम्मल तौर पर उसका विड्रॉल एंड एज मेंशनड विलिंगनेस टू परमानेंट सीज फायर इन द फ्यूचर रजामंदी फॉर द परमानेंट सीज फायर ये उनका मीडिया इसको इंकशाफ सबसे पहले वो शेयर कर रहा है फिर सारी दुनिया का मीडिया भी इसको शेयर कर रहा है फिर आप देखिए वर्ड दे से फिर आप देखिए वो क्या कह रहे हैं इसराइली ऑफिशियल्स के बयान को वो कोट कर रहा है वी होप दैट व्हाट वी हैव प्रपोज इज इनफ टू ब्रिंग हमास इनटू सीरियस निगोसिएशन सेड द इसराइली ऑफिशल इसराइली ऑफिशल ये, ये कह रहे हैं मीडिया को बता रहे हैं कि जो हमने प्रपोजल भेजा है हम ये समझते हैं कि ये इनफ है हमास को ये बताने के लिए कि सीरियस निगोसिएशन हो कि हम सीरियस है इस बार वी होप दैट दिस इज अ प्रपोजल फ्रॉम विच दे विल अंडरस्टैंड दैट वी आर सीरियस अबाउट रीचिंग अ डील के पहले तो फिर इधर उधर की चीजें होती रही और वाज था कि इसराइल ऐसे मुतालबात रखता था कि जो कोई समझ से बाला तर थे यानी उनके तहदी भी उसके ऊपर उनको डिफेंड नहीं कर पाते थे कि ये क्या शराय थे तो पहली बार वो कह रहा है कि हमने वो लॉजिकल डिमांड्स और चीज़ें रखी हैं जो मतलब हमास को लगेगा कि हम सीरियस हैं और टाइम वेस्ट नहीं कर रहे दे नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इट इज पॉसिबल दैट इफ द फर्स्ट स्टेज इज इंप्लीमेंटेड इट विल बी पॉसिबल टू एडवांस द नेक्स्ट स्टेज एंड रीच द एंड ऑफ द वॉर अब ये बेसिक मुआदा तो पहले जो डिस्कस होता रहा वो भी यही था हमास भी मतलब इन फेजेस में ये सारी चीजें होंगी ना एकदम से तो नहीं होगा उधर से तुर्की के वजीर खारजा वो यहां पर पहुंच चुके हैं और अभी कुछ देर पहले जो अरब के वजीर खारजा हैं उनकी आपस में मुलाकात भी हो चुकी है जिसमें उन्होंने ये तमाम चीजें वाज तौर पर रख दी हैं ठीक है कि आजादी फलस्तीन जंग बंदी और जिन्होंने यह किया है उनकी सजा और रिकंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ री बिल्डिंग ऑफ द गाजा अच्छा अब यहां पर एक चीज समझे देखिए हमने सऊदी अरब के किरदार पर बहुत तनकीद की है और कर भी रहे हैं कि वो उस तरह से लीडिंग रोल के ऊपर नहीं आया पहले जब ओआईसी का इजलास हुआ तो उन्होंने रिजेक्ट किया था ऑयल की जो बंदिश है यूनिवर्सल टेलीविजन को सब्सक्राइब करना न भूलें उसके बाद बेल बटन पे क्लिक करें और अपने कॉमेंट्स के सेक्शन में अपने कीमती जो ख्याल का इजहार जरूर